you may witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah, the one who is unique and has no partners. And we may witness that the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's servant and messenger. قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم وإنك لا على خلق عظيم and truly you O Muhammad are of a tremendous character so we often find that in times like this especially in the information age there's a lot of information around or material around the Prophet Sallallahu and when it comes to things like Islamophobia, uh, often these informations are used in malicious ways to uh, defame the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or to besmear his character or to spread false uh, information about him. But when we look at the Quran, we see, and even within hadith, we'll find there's certain hadiths that are not talking so, so well about the Quran. And when you look at, I mean, or about the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but then when you look at the Qur'an, you see that the beauty of the Nabi Sallallahu character, there was nothing but compassion. There was nothing but uh, complete uh, regard for humanity and for the needs of people. And uh, so that is why the Qur'an says that you are in a, in a tremendous character. You were designed that way so that you can become the example of, of good character. And so when the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then preached his message, he said, okay. I was not sent for any other person, uh, purpose other than perfecting uh, human character, perfecting noble character. So we find that within the, if we look in the history of Islam, obviously Islam originated um, out of an Arabian culture and we find that a lot of the things that we still practice within Islam are pagan culture, especially the, the Hajj, for example, the throwing of stones, the circumambulating around the Kaaba, and so on. But the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't come to take this away from people, but he said instead of, of circumambulating the Kaaba naked, which people used to do, put a piece of cloth around you. you know? Instead of chanting uh, uh, things to many different gods, focus on one deity. Right? <clears throat> and so he came to purify those things. Um, but a lot of the times today, we see that Muslims confuse culture with Islam. And often the, the, the traditions that are being adopted are really Arab traditions. The wearing of the long thobes, the abaya and stuff like that, the, the niqab, it's all Arab culture. And they think that the more they adopt that, the more Muslim they become. So, six of the things that I want to talk about today, it's called the kuliyatu sit. And when people, re when you hear people refer to the kuliyatu sit in uh, usul al-fiqh, it often refers to the six things that are sacred, that Allah has made sacred, and it is a responsibility of, of every human being to protect those six things. The first thing that the Nabi Sallallahu said that we have to protect is deen, right? Now the Quran says, inna deena indallahi islam. The only, the preferred way of life for Allah is Islam. Often we interpret that Islam as the religion of Islam, right? But according to the Quran, that deen refers to peace, surrender and submission. So anything that one does in terms of practice within your culture, within your religion, that leads you on a journey of peace, of surrendering the ego, and of submission to, to a higher being, then you're on the right path. And therefore when Allah speaks about the Jews and the Christians and the Sabians, Allah says, on them, those who believe, and the Jews, the Christians and the Sabians, and all those who, who have faith, on them shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. Because as long as you have this uh, 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 formula right, uh, you should be fine irrespective of the religion that you follow or the, or the traditions or the culture that you um, adhere to. It's a system that keeps us in balance. Now you must remember that if you read right through the Quran, one of the major themes in the Quran is Mizan, right? Even the Quran, one of the names of the Quran is Mizan, which means the balance, right? So everything is set up in the balance. And so what Allah wants us to, to do is to be successful in our uh, uh, um, interactions to also keep within the balance. 
So in the way we eat, there's balance in there. Even the way we uh, practice our spirituality, there's balance in there. Um, when we have fun and when we, you know, when we practice our spirituality, there's balance in there also. You don't can't sit on your musalla uh, 24 hours a day, but you forget um, other, the other aspects of your life, for example. So this deen is not just an outer um, path that we follow. Um, it is a. It is also an inner, right? Uh, so how do we preserve our own faith also is part of our deen. How do we make sense of the rituals that we have in our life? It should also be part of our deen. The system that helps us to stay authentic, it is part of our deen. And anybody who desires something other than peace, submission and surrender, it will not be accepted of him. Now what does that mean is that you try to do something other than that. For example, uh, try to uh, set up your own system, but it's, it's, it's a system based on uh, capitalism where the one earns more and the other one has to suffer. Those kind of systems will never survive and Allah will never accept those kind of systems. So when we refer to Islam uh, in terms of the Quran, it's not the religion, but it is that system of Allah consciousness, submission, surrender and living within that moderation. And then Allah says in the Quran, La ikra fid deen. There is no compulsion in this way of life, in this deen. Qad tabayyana rushtu min al We have all have that built-in capacity to understand and to know and to recognize uh, what is truth from what is evil, right? Qad tabayyana rushtu min al So truth and, and, and evil stands out clearly from one another. Uh, فَمَنْ فَمَنْ يَكْفُرُ بِالتَّغْهُودِ وَيُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ اسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْأُرْوَةِ الْوُثْقَى لَنْ فِصَامَ لَهَا وَاللَّهُ سَمِيُّنَ عَلِيمٌ And so Allah says that uh, truth stands out clearly from error. Whoever rejects oppression and believes in Allah has grasped the most trustworthy handhold that never breaks. And Allah hears and knows all things. So when one attach oneself to this deen, you can be assured that Allah will assist you on that, on that journey. But Allah does not assist on the journey of oppression. The second thing that needs to be protected is the intellect, right? And the Nabi Sallallahu says that uh, when we talk about the intellect, it's about keeping the, the, the ability to think clear, right? So one does not befog the mind, one does not uh, put the mind in an unnecessarily altered state, for example. And also one does not, a Muslim does not allow irrational feelings to take precedence over logical thinking. I mean, Islam is very logical, the way the Quran is set up is very logical. The process that the Nabi Sallallahu has followed to, to um, alleviate or, or to eradicate uh, poverty and oppression was all logical. So one can't argue against that. So the Quran says, Ya ayyuhu alladheena amanu innama al-khamr wal-maysir wal-azlam wal-ansab wal-azlam rijusun min amli shaytan fajtanibuhu la'allakum tuflihun. So in terms of the, of the intellect, the Quran said that so it is better that you regard intoxicants, games of chance, idolatrous practices, fortune telling as works of sh shaytan. So shun that, put that one side if you truly want to succeed. The Quran says, وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا نَفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْخَقْرِ That you are not allowed to take any life form other than with justice, other than with a, a reason for taking the life. For example, even uh, when the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his followers uh, took over Makkah again after so many years of being uh, exiled from it, he says, now that we enter the sacred space, uh, not even a tree should be uprooted. No, no, and no woman or no child should be harmed, and no insect should should even be killed. Therefore, when you when you wear your ihram when you on Hajj, um, you can't even kill a fly or flee. Um, so life, and that is all just to train us that life within Islam is sacred, and so one needs to be conscious when we uh, take life. And then the Quran says. And whoever kills a believer intentionally, his recompense is hell to abide therein and the wrath and the curse of Allah upon him and a great punishment is prepared for him. Now one can say, oh, this is a bit harsh. 
But one just has to look at the reality of when you kill someone intentionally, how do you live with that uh, on your consciousness? It haunts you constantly. It's if you are in this constant hell all the time. And then Allah says, because of that, we have ordained for the children of Israel that if anyone killed a person not in the retaliation of murder or to spread mischief in the land, it would be as if, as if he has killed the whole of mankind. So that's the second, uh, second sacred thing. The third sacred thing is the protection of property. So there's a lot of hadith and Quranic verses around property when we borrow money from people to return it in the same way. When you borrow somebody's car, for example, you, you make sure that the car is returned in the same condition that it was given to you. When you use somebody's house, you make sure that the furniture is rearranged in the way that it was found. Even borrowing, you know, in our culture, we, we borrow sugar and oil and so on from the neighbor, you know. Ensure that you return those things. I've seen as we grow, grew up on the Cape Flats, lots of aunties being angry with one another because of oil that wasn't returned from last year Ramadan. Mm -hmm. So, return things that are, are borrowed. So Muslims have a responsibility to, pre uh, to preserve the property of others and not to misuse them or to desecrate them. Even when, when the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was uh, going into Europe to spread the message of Islam, he forbid his Sahaba, these companions, to even uh, destroy uh, a church. And he said that because these are of the people of book, Muslims are even allowed to pray uh, within a church. And the last one is uh, the preservation or the protection of human dignity. Uh, also very important, respecting human dignity is one of the highest priorities within Islam when it comes to human relations. Accusing somebody without evidence is haram within Islam. Hurting somebody's honor by bad-mouthing them is haram. Being suspicious of somebody without having enough evidence. Laughing at somebody uh, using offensive nicknames. And this all comes from Surah Hujrat where Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la tashar qawmin min qawmin asa an yakuna khayran minhum, wa la nisa'un min nisa'in asa an yakuna khayran minhunna, wa la talmizu anfusakum, wa la tanabazu bil alqab, bi'asa al ismu al fusuk, ba'da al iman, wa man lam yatab yutib, uh, o oh, you who have attained to faith, no, no men should deride other men. It may well be that the latter is better than the former. And no woman should deride another woman. It may be that the latter is better than the former. And neither shall you defame one another, nor insult one another, or use offensive nicknames. And the Quran says it's, it's, it's even worse to use an offensive nickname for somebody um, after he has believed. So sometimes in the time of the Nabi Wasallam, somebody was called maybe Murra, Al-Murra. He was the bitter person, right? So now that he has embraced Islam, it would be haram to, to call him um, by those offensive nicknames. If someone keeps on lying, uh, cannot stick to commitments, does not honor uh, uh, others, manipulates others, then obviously these actions, one can derive from that that this person is not, is not of good character. And vice versa, if someone keeps on smiling, he has a good nature, uh, he's often helping people, he goes the extra mile for others, um, then you know that this person is of a good character. So how is good character manifested? Um, Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali and others related that the sum of prophetic teaching is that good character is manifested in five things. One is the fulfillment of the rights of others. We find today that these things are almost not important anymore. It's about us. We don't care really much about the rights of others. Avoiding hurting or harming others. And this could not, this is not just physical but also harming people by saying bad words to people, by, by bad-mouthing them. Being cheerful and positive is in one's dealings with others. Recognizing the good in others and reciprocating good. 
and responding to the wrong of others uh, with nothing but good. Something that we learn also in psychology, having the highest positive regard for people is actually a sunnah. So on a physical level, giving feels like it's we're taking away our resources, but actually on a spiritual level, um, we receive double and triple. Um, and the Quran says, uh, we give them back for what they have given, min khaythu la yahtasib. And we reward them in ways that they do not even imagine where it's coming from. Right? So giving on a, on, a physical, on a physical plane might look like it's giving away Mama. and our resources Mama. gets depleted. But actually we spiritually, we gain when we do that.